Thursday, June 25th. Rundown is brought to you by High Noon. Uh, High Noon Watermelon is, is the, the tops for me, the king of the castle. Uh, I'll drink anything except the black cherry. Every other flavor is money good. High Noon hard seltzer made with real vodka, real juice, and sparkling water. That's the difference. Everything else is like a sugary drink and a malty beverage. You have a couple of those and you get sick. You get a hangover. It sits in your belly. It's gross. High noon, though, watermelon, pineapple, grapefruit, black cherry if you want to do it. Uh, lime and peach are just in time for the summer. It's the new premier hard seltzer on the market. Like a couple other names uh, were big in the industry for the last year or so. Not anymore. Nooners have taken over. It's the only way to drink it. Not only is it what the cool kids are doing, but it is, in fact, the best hard seltzer on the market. 100 calories, gluten-free, no added sugar. You can get it delivered right to your house uh, through Drizzly. That's what I do. Shows up right on my doorstep. Uh, whether you're an existing user or first-time first time user, use the promo code DAVE for $5 off your Drizzly order when you get high noon. That's promo code DAVE, D-A-V-E, uh, when you get your nooners. Hashtag nooners. Uh, Trent is in, Roan is in, Portnoy and Big Cat are out. Fart gun. Um, so let's dive right into it. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, <clears throat> there's only one topic we should be talking about for the rest of time. I don't care if there's one rundown topic forever and ever, one podcast topic, one blog topic. Riggs crying at Pinehurst. <laughs> the silliest thing that's ever happened at Barstool. I had to have a four-play representative on. I haven't heard Riggs. I, maybe we should get Riggs on. I haven't heard from his words. Do you have a, a – uh, has he responded to this trend? Yeah, so we did the podcast last night. It's out right now, four-play pod. Go download it, listen to it. Um, my stance on this is it's a preposterous video. This place means the world to me. It's because of you guys, so. Thanks for everything you did, my man. Thanks for <laughs> I, I at no point do I think it's like I mean when we talked about it last night I just started laughing and laughing and laughing he did not like that whatsoever his defense and I, I'll speak for him for a second he is saying the reason that he cried is because he was at this five-star golf resort for 99 days playing golf every day and he made great relationships he made great friends people he's going to be friends with forever 100 days that might have been too long it's obviously a trying time in our country and in the world and he was able to go to this oasis and make these connections and these friends. And when he walked out that day and people were clapping as he left, he got a little emotional. God. And he, that's, he was overwhelmed. And he, I mean, he's going to go back there, but he was like, I'm leaving. But I've been here for 99 days. They took care of me during the pandemic. It's been great. Um, what I said to him was that I think over the course of that 99 days, he may or may not have lost touch with reality just a little bit mm -hmm. because there's many, many other things going on in this world. And to be leaving a golf resort when you're going to be going back eventually, I don't know when, but it's definitely going to be sooner rather than later. I just didn't understand the crying thing. And he was, he was mad that I didn't understand the crying thing. Um, but what, the way that Frankie put it, because Frankie was obviously on the show too, Frankie had a good example. He was saying, Borelli's opened up their patio again recently, right? And Mr. Borelli made a speech, and he got teary-eyed because they had just gotten through the roughest patch in restaurant industry history, and now we're hopefully coming out the other side of it. You open up again, all these people show up to show you love and buy stuff at your restaurant. That is a time where you should cry. But that's his dad. That's his dad. That's his dad. He's known his whole life. Frankie, no. work at Borelli's. This is the fucking. This is a golf course that he went to for fucking a hundred days. Yeah. And that's what that's what we're saying. Like Frankie was saying, it made sense for my dad to cry because we had just gone through this. Riggs stayed at a golf resort for ninety nine days and lived the best life. He's probably gonna live. That's probably gonna be the best stretch of his life forever. He basically had the whole restaurant to himself. So okay, like, here's here here's my thoughts on the whole thing. Number one. If Riggs flat out told me, dude, it was the best 99 days of my life, and now I've got to go back to the shithole that is regular world, and I started crying, if it was a selfish cry, I'd almost understand that. The people who are telling me that it's, well, you know, it's the pandemic, and uh, people are emotional. Riggs hasn't thought about the pandemic once because he's been playing golf for 99 days. If you were like living in the pandemic and working in a hospital and all that, there's plenty of reasons to cry right now. Dan. Oh, I think we lost, oh, we lost him. 
There are plenty of reasons to cry, though. He's right about that. Maybe he's just letting his point marinate. It was like a beautiful thing that everybody got a crack at. Uh, like it, it unified the community because everybody made fun of Riggs. It did. That's true. And like Kevin was saying, he, the, in North Carolina, it's very different. We've all been in New York City for most of the pandemic. I think, Rowan, I think you've been around New York City um, or Brooklyn or whatever. And you go to North Carolina, and I've been down there a couple of times to do golf videos and shit like that. It is a different world. So he wasn't thinking about the pandemic all that often because New York and North Carolina, in terms of the pandemic, are polar opposites. Right. And like, don't, aren't people from North Carolina, like they have to quarantine when they come back now or some shit like that? Or like, uh, isn't like or, or North Carolina is like experiencing a spike basically because no one, no one gives a fuck about it? I'm sure. I mean, pretty much every state that like didn't do what we did is now experiencing a spike. Now New York's like the only safe place to be. What do you think was weirder? The crying or the clapping? They're just as weird. What were they clapping about? Who were those people? Did you meet <laughs> any of those people, Trent? Who were they? No, and I'll tell you what. I was just there. I went Sunday night, and I left Tuesday morning, and I walked straight out that door. Not a single person said goodbye. Not one, all right, there he goes. Not one of those things. And it was, no, I don't, I don't know who those people were. Uh, I, they work at the golf course. I know Pashley, Tom Pashley, who was the guy who sort of led Riggs through the line. He's the president of Piners, a great guy. But other than that, I didn't recognize any of the people. So you're telling me on the podcast he was not like, like I, I picture it like uh, Costanza when he was like, I wept like a baby, and he's kind of like embracing it. Nope, I wept like a baby. <laughs> Riggs is being like dead serious about this. Yeah, he said he was he was proud of of what happened because he was emotional. It showed the type of connection that he had. And the thing that I said to him was that that's fine. But it would have been weirder if we had come on this podcast and we didn't make fun of you. Like, if we had all just agreed and like, yes, that, yep, that's totally what should have happened. A great moment for you and everybody. It's just an absurd, preposterous thing that I think comes from losing touch with reality when being at such an awesome place for such an extended period of time. So here's what a caller on radio thought. Tell me what you think of this theory. Riggs went, like, back into the womb for Pinehurst. He was, he was in the womb and insulated from the real world and he was just reborn a baby. And what do babies do? They cry. Yeah, <laughs> that is realistic. That's, that's his recent over information as I went golfing for three months and cried. Yeah, he basically, yeah, he just, he, he, it was a dream. He was living a dream and he didn't want to wake up and he, he had to go back to reality and it, and it absolutely sucked. He should just <laughs> move there and live there then. It's, he is? He is, so now there's a Barstool Classic in Chicago that, that's going on right now. So you go from North Carolina where things are – it's a different world. It's like a bubble. You go to Illinois where it's about as strict as you can get. you got to wear masks everywhere. So, yeah, maybe he in the back of his head he was like, I really am leaving the womb, and i got to go back out into the big bad world. I, I, well, all right, one last question. What's, what's the weirdest part, crying in the moment or then posting the video yourself? The fact that he posted the video is almost like he's asking for people to make fun of it because it's not like someone caught him crying. It's like, right. look at me proudly crying. What killed me was the finger wag when he gave you like, guys. Oh, you guys. Oh, God. <laughs> that was fucking dying. Dude. I mean, if, if, uh, if he had posted it and was like, guys, like, I can't believe what just happened. I just, like, completely lost control of myself and started weeping like a baby. I'd be like, all right, well, you know, you have a good sense of humor about it, but – that was the last part that I told him. On the podcast, I said, you put the video out there, you have to be at least some sort of self-deprecation or acknowledgement that, boy, this is a pretty fucking ridiculous thing that happened, and I started crying. But he played it straight, and he's defending his spot, and he, he, that's how he feels, so I don't know what to say. To me, at least the silver lining is that shows that there is a level of appreciation that Riggs has for living the best life of anybody. Like, that there's at least a level of him being like, wow, this shit is awesome. Because if he didn't appreciate, like, how fucking sweet his gig is that he, he wound up with, and, I mean, deservedly so, obviously, but, like, he, he has it pretty good, so I'm glad he appreciates it. You could really make the argument that he lived the best life out of anyone, like, in the country for the pandemic. Yeah, because he was at a place that is so specific to his lifestyle where you can play – golf every day at the 
premier golf resort in the country. Pinehurst, there's 10 golf courses. It is this massive, it's just, I mean, it's a great place. I've been down there a couple of times during quarantine and yeah, I don't want to leave either, but like I've been coming back to New York, but yes, I think you're right. He is in the running, at least in the top three or five for people who had the best quarantine. Trey, can I ask how it works? Cause you went down there a couple of times. Like you, like was, was he, uh, from all accounts, he was like the mayor down there. So was he just like walking around and like shooting like highs to everybody? Was he getting everything for free? Was like, what, what was, how, how did it manifest itself, his power that he had? I can't speak to the financials of it all, but he is definitely, he has a cart that he drives around down there and he's very much the mayor of Piners. You guys said that yesterday and he did, he raised all that money. He's been giving him a ton of publicity and he is treated as such down there. He, yeah, he maybe does a couple finger guns at people. People are excited. They're like, oh, there goes Riggs. But again, you know? we're talking about raising money for like the most prestigious golf resort in the country. It's not like he like saved the school or like, you know, went to like a children's hospital for coronavirus. It's a pretty wealthy fucking golf resort. <laughs> But those people, those people don't know that. Those people aren't sure. the school that wasn't saved. They're the ones that, like, we might have been rich, but you gave us more money. So <laughs> here's to you, you Ricky. guys. You, you're good. You're Yo. good. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a video. I, 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 it's got like two million views on Twitter. Oh, I, I'm sure. I mean, that'll we'll be watching that one for fucking ever. Uh, I feel like I've been watching Vince Carter play forever. I might shed a tear or two with Vince Sanity retiring. I would venture to guess. I would, I would bet that Vince Carter is one of the most beloved, like, uh, players that don't play for your team. He has more of those fans than, like, anybody. It didn't matter where Vince Carter played. Everybody fucking loved that guy. He was a, a spectacle to watch. And I, I don't think I've ever heard someone be like, ah, I fucking hate Vince Carter. Or what's the bad story about Vince Carter? Like, what's, where, where is the one time that he ever had a misstep? Like, I watched Grin Vince Carter grade school, high school, college – like young adulthood, like every part of my life, Vince Carter has been there. So it's like, uh, it's going to be sad to see him go. It's not like he was a contributor to the NBA, but he is just like the link to the Allen Iverson era, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The 2000 dunk contest. That's one of my early memories, like of sports memories of him just going crazy with the windmill dunk and, and the arm and the hoop that's iconic. And he's got, he's got the benefit of, He's probably the best dunker of all time, arguably at least. And he's going to live on in gift form. So he's, I mean, he's got some of the best gifts out there. Yeah, he's got the over. So even though he's going to now no longer play professional basketball, he's still going to be a part of our lives. Dude, that dunk contest will forever be, you know, th th there's probably been better, maybe a better dunk here and there since then. But what he, the jump that the, the, the dunk contest made from like 99 to 2000, I mean, it was insane. He was doing shit that, I didn't even like, I couldn't even dream up. And when he dunked over Frederick Weiss and put his nuts on his head in the Olympics and just jumped over a fucking guy, that was right after the Knicks had drafted that son of a bitch too. <laughs> I mean, it was, it, he has some of the all time highlights. You could make the argument. He's the most like highlight real athlete, like maybe ever with some of the shit he put out there. So see you later, Vince. I heard uh, that when he was a kid that uh, his mom used to put quarters up on like the counter or maybe on top of the refrigerator or something to like teach him to be like a, a jumper. And I've always been like, if I ever have kids, dude, I'm going to be putting dollar bills. On so I think about that shit all the time. I'm like, by, by the time Tiger Woods was like Keegan's age, he was like oh. on the golf course playing, you know? Oh yeah. Uh, like, trying to get Keegan out of goddamn diapers. I'm not, I'm not putting up quarters on the fucking refrigerator asking him to jump up there. Come on. <laughs> is that true, Ron, is that a true story or did you make that up? No, I've, I've heard that story, I, but I think I, I read it probably fucking 20 years ago when he was, like, early in his career. But I, I, I've, I have heard that as a story about him. He never got his ship, did he? No. No. Nope. Nope. Sad. Where was his best chance? I mean, the fact that him and Tracy McGrady were on a young team together, that young Raptors team, like, that that should have been something. Or the Nets teams when it was Jason Kidd and, like, right. Martin and everybody. Like, one of those teams you th you'd think would have won it. He never won with one of those teams? No. Crazy. No, I don't think so. He, uh, yeah. that, that, like, Raptors team, I guess they ran into, what, Iverson and Ray Allen and the Bucks and them. But there was that one – I think it was the, the Bucks series, like a seven-game series where it was one of, like – the best things I ever watched. Vince Carter went off and it was just like back and forth between those two. His balls. other legacy is he will always 
his Raptors jersey will always be worn at music festivals. You always see the Raptors Vince Carter jersey. I feel like that's one of those that all the frat guys put into rotation. Amen. So yeah, he was, uh, it felt like the future. He just felt like people are going to jump higher now. You're going to have dunkers who can yeah. shoot. And like, he was like, had a winning smile. Like everything about him was like, cool. Carolina. He's got the Carolina blue jerseys, North Carolina. And like, yeah, I think he's like the missing link between modern basketball and like old school where it's like all of a sudden everybody could jump and everyone could do three sixties. And it was like no big deal because of a guy like Vince. Who else is there from his era? Like who's the oldest guy now? Well, they said he was the last one from the 2000, like, whatever, uh, all-star game uh, to retire. He was, like, the last one active. Um, I mean, he's old now. He's, he's like, 42 yeah. or something. He, yeah, he played, like, 22 seasons or some shit, so he's up there. I don't even know who, like, the next oldest would be. I, I bet you it's a pretty pretty big drop-off because his contemporaries were, you know, old-school guys. So, uh, good run from Insanity. Second half of the rundown is brought to you by Manscaped. Uh, Manscaped just released the weed whacker for your nose and your ear hair. So everyone's, uh, everyone knows now you gotta, you gotta trim your balls and keep everything beneath the belt, uh, clean, but you forget about your ear and your nose hair, which to be honest, I luckily, I don't, I definitely don't have the ear hair. Uh, I heard that Marty Mush, uh, has a problem with this. I heard that Marty's got some significant ear and nose hair, so he's got to get the weed whacker going, which is, it's better to just admit it. It's better to just be honest with yourself and fix the problem rather than bury your head in the sand. Now you're good. I don't see anything. You guys are both good. Marty Mush strikes me as a guy who was born with ear hair. He's yeah. always yeah. had it. <laughs> well, Marty Mush came out of the womb just like he is now, like a beard. He walked out. He, like, slapped the nurse on the ass and was like, get me a fucking beer. Get your mother's ass right. out of here. <laughs> uh, so go to Manscaped. Uh, they've got the skin-safe technology with all of their weed whackers and trimmers. That prevents nicks, snags, and tugs in all your delicate holes. Oh, Jesus. Uh, the only nose hair trimmer on the market with a powerful and rechargeable lithium-ion battery that lasts for over 90 minutes of use. If you need to trim your ear and nose hair for 90 minutes, we got a bigger problem, bro. I don't think Manscaped is the answer for you. You need, like, surgery or something. Uh, but go to manscaped.com, code RUNDOWN, get 20% off plus free shipping when you go to manscaped.com. Promo code rundown. Uh, go whack your weeds right now. Um, we got this story from NASCAR, which is a dark one and a weird one. And I think uh, people are kind of missing the point here. So Bubba Watson's, uh, Bubba, Bubba Wallace's uh, garage had a noose in it. And it was first characterized as like a hate crime because someone showed up and hung a noose in, you know, the black athlete's uh, garage. The FBI investigated it. They determined that it's been there for a long time now, since like October 2019, that uh, all of the garages have some sort of rope that's used to close the garage door, but that this one is the only one that's specifically a noose. And they released a picture of it today, and it's a motherfucking noose. Yeah. Like, I wasn't sure if they were like, it's a rope tied in a loop, and people are interpreting it as a noose. It is like a Hollywood movie KKK noose. So I don't know when it showed up, why it showed up. All I know is that there just shouldn't be fucking nooses floating around and certainly not in the black driver's garage. So whatever the circumstances are, the people who are taking a victory lap being like, I told you it wasn't a hate crime, like ease up because we're still talking about a fucking noose. Yeah, like let's say it was all a coincidence that Bubba Wallace got that garage, that it has been there since October 2019. And I think the way that they assign garages is, and I've just been learning about this because I don't know anything about NASCAR, but it's by the point system. So you have this number of points, then you get that garage. So let's just say Bubba Wallace got that garage completely by incident, but uh, coincidence. But like you're saying, Kevin, there's still a fucking noose in that garage. Like that yeah. seems like now that maybe that the problem that wasn't a direct hate crime. Now let's move on to the area where maybe there shouldn't be any nooses around a NASCAR track or anywhere. It might be worse. It's like, why are there just nooses floating around since October of 2019? What the fuck's going on? Yeah, it's and not I, good. It should be the onus to kind of be on them to, like, make him feel comfortable. I don't know. I, I feel like it should be like if, if he is the only black driver in NASCAR, 
I think that NASCAR should try and make him a little bit more welcome so he doesn't feel like the outsider that his skin would make him out to be. But a lot of people victory lapped on me because I said, uh, whoever did this deserves their life ruined. And there, a lot of people were like, oh, like, well, what, where are you now? Like, I know who did this. Like, uh, Bubba Smollett did this. And But my question is to those people, it's like, what should my have response been? Like, if this is true, someone should have their life ruined? Like, should I? This is the lead story on SportsCenter. So are we supposed to believe that, like, it's, it's, not, it's not true or it's not made up? Like, it wasn't on, like, a news channel or anything like that. It was on SportsCenter, and it was presented as facts. Like, I think that it's pretty fair to speak out against this. I don't really think that it's being, like, a fucking soy boy to be, like, this dude should feel welcome in his own sport in his own garage. Yeah, yeah well, you, made, you made that declaration with the information that you had, and the information you had at that time – was that somebody put a fucking noose in Bubba Wallace's garage. I think everybody felt that way. Uh, and, and you were out here qualifying every statement with, like, if this is believed to be true. Well, I mean, then we're going down the road of, like, victim shaming for all sorts of, you know, you, you, if you were to say that about every controversy, like, you're going to be skeptical over every single thing. I think, I think it's a pretty safe take to say, let's make sure Bubba Wallace is not uncomfortable with fucking nooses. Now, listen, yes, if they do some investigation and it's turning out to be like an inside job where we're, we're making, you know, we're trying to blame other people, all like some crazy shit, then fine, we can have this discussion. But right now, I think it's still a safe bet to say, let's just get the fucking nooses out of NASCAR, guys. Not a big deal. Yeah, what does it help? I mean, I, I think that there's other type of like uh, handle knots that you can use to pull something down that wasn't that that same knot. Like, I don't think that that's really hurtful to anybody. And if it's hurtful to somebody to have the noose up, then it's like wearing a mask. It's like I don't give a fuck about it. But like, if it's if it's gonna make you more comfortable, it's not gonna hurt me any. Mm -hmm. Also, why are NASCAR garages still getting closed by separate ropes? Like, why don't are they automated? Like, why don't they just have a rope? connected to it like why are they giving you why are they opening the door for one guy to be like you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna make a noose and it's like yeah, let's eliminate crazy. that completely that's ridiculous uh I, I guess sort of along those lines um the crystalia is on the offense a little bit now uh there was an article where uh he released the full conversations had between him and a few of the girls who were accusing him on twitter and one of them wrote back like, hey, I'm 21 now and I'm down to fuck. She didn't include that in her screenshot. Another girl, uh, another couple conversations, apparently, allegedly, Chris D'Elia, uh, he, you see him say like, oh, you're 16? Shit, like, I'm out of here, goodbye. So there's a couple examples, I guess, of, of Chris D'Elia actually not hooking up with underage girls or some of these girls being a little more pursuant of him which were not originally out there in the screenshots and, uh, the, and like the original uh, story, which is all well and good. I'm not saying that every single case was probably true. And I'm sure some of those girls were the ones like pursuing him. But uh, I don't know why you would wait like a week to talk about it. And I don't know why you would stay silent. And I, I mean, to me, the, the, like, the guilt that came out of his reaction in the very beginning if there was if there was no truth to it, you would have said that right away. You would have put those out right away. I think uh, it's like too little, too late for Dalia, but I'm not sure where where that ends up going. I don't think it's really a good response to be like, sometimes I didn't bang underage. Well, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. If there was three examples and he had three three examples of him saying, no, 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 that didn't happen. But it's like, okay, there's three. What about the other like thousand? There were so many. You know, that's the yeah. problem. And. Uh, and I, again, I think, you know, if, if, if this happened to you and it was 100% untrue, you would have very quickly had those receipts and very quickly uh, been denying it. I think this is probably him trying to build like a, a case to stay out of jail. I think he needs to like prove that he's not like a full blown uh, criminal. But even if he is able to prove, you know, certain things with underage girls, I, I think that the damage is done reputation wise. And that there's enough examples otherwise of him that he hasn't disproved. Right. The fact that you are even put in a position where you're like, all right, I got to put together this, this pitch that I'm not trying to get it with underage girls. That's just not a good position uh, to be in. Not good. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's realistic that like, maybe even like some of these, it's not like he, 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 uh, like some of these girls probably did want to fuck him, but that doesn't mean that he should have done that. That's the thing. It's like, it, 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 it makes you look a, like you're not a full blown like forcing someone, but it still is like you're you you're using your you know your power and your status and all that shit to uh, exploit. So 
not not exactly exonerated, Crystal. Yeah. Um, anything else for the rundown here? Uh, Davey's still out there trading. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more. Why am I playing that song? I'll tell you why. Because E-Trade kicked me off. Uh, what else? I mean, nothing Nothing really further. Um, what do you, 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 what's your prediction on baseball? I'm asking everybody if and how much baseball there will be. I think we're getting the whole thing. We're going to get all 60 in the playoffs. Really? Is that just Roan being optimistic, Roan, or you really believe that? I, I don't see – I mean, I, I see there being a uh, little, like, burps of, of uh, like, coronavirus and people getting coronavirus, but I don't think that that's going to stop baseball from happening. And I don't know what the evidence is after getting it to this point that, it's gonna, that they're going to stop it. So right. I take my cues from golf, and that golf has been back. And, and just yesterday they had uh, three guys test positive. One of them was a golfer. Um, two of them were caddies of golfers and a bunch of guys just pulled out being like, I don't even want to risk, um, contracting this virus. And to me, golf is the one sport and we're seeing it because it's the first sport back. That is, you can socially distance by nature. It's outside. Nobody has to be near each other. Mm -hmm. But I, I think I don't, I, I'm not very optimistic about sports after what's going on with golf. They say that even it's like a 0.25% of all the people that have been tested in the PJ tour bubble but I think it's only going to get worse. And if golf can't do it, Jeff D. Lowe, shout out. So guess Jeff D. Lowe. What a guy. But if, if <laughs> golf can't do it, I have Jeff. If golf can't do it, I don't know how much, how, how much confidence I have in a sport like baseball being able to do it. And if you look, all over the country, cases are going crazy. So it might not even be up to the sports. Yeah, I mean, I, we're like the only country in the world that's like still going up. And uh, I, I think it still might end up being a small number, but I think it's going to be up to players who it's like, yeah, listen, I know it's like 0.25%, but all it, like, but I personally do not want to get this and I'm not willing to risk it. And if enough guys feel that way, I could see it uh, all kind of crumbling, but uh, we shall see. So if I'm uh, being optimistic, Ron, are you being p pessimistic, Kevin, just being like, this isn't going to happen. I'm, n well, nothing uh, ever happens to me. Pessimistic Kevin is a fucking, uh, it's redundant, bro. It's, <laughs> I actually, it's, it's not, I don't want baseball because I think if baseball does not play this year, I think it's the final nail in the Wilpons coffin. So I'm rooting against baseball. So actually me being like anti-baseball is me being optimistic. So fuck you, Roan. You're cutting off your nose to spite your face. This is what well, this is, right? I'm, I'm like cutting off my really nose because my nose is fucking poisonous and like going to kill my whole body <laughs> and probably get rid of my nose. <laughs> well, I don't think I, I don't think football is going to happen. I think football is oh, completely off the table. No, I'll tell you what. Everyone's been upset about sports and shit. No one has really been considering that there might not be football. If you think that there's been civil unrest and riots and whatnot, wait till middle America hears that there's no football. I mean, <laughs> watch the fuck out. Like, have the suicide rates gone up yet? Is that mathematically something that's happened, or is it just a prediction still? I mean, I've heard about mental health issues going up. I don't know about specific, you know, suicide rates. If you get rid of football, a lot of people are going to be – you know, put them shotguns in the back I think, of the fucking head. I think I saw just earlier today that Texas has paused their reopening and told people to get the fuck back inside because they had 50% of all the cases in a single day when they – it's just – that's what I think. I don't think it's going to be up to sports. At, at, it's going to yeah. get to a point where the cases are going to be so bad everywhere else that they're going to be like, it's pretty crazy that we're still trying to do sports right now. I almost, like, respect the, the – I don't respect, but the, the, the Florida and, like, Texas governors who were like – Fuck it, we're gonna be fine. And then they were probably like, ah, totally wrong. I tried. I tried. Everyone go back inside. I was totally fucking wrong. Or yeah. then like the cases are going up. Let's wait one more week and see if they keep on going up. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if <laughs> or you do really or you take a side where if everybody has it, nobody has it. That's, and, you know? There we go. There's a spin zone. If nope. everyone's dead, you can't die. Hey. Good point. All right. We'll catch you boys next time. All right. Later.